cardinals fly and lord how i've grown as the years they have gone by i owe you my good fortune i owe you my guitar how these roads have shaped me and wrecked my cars but i've climbed every mountain and i've counted every star Sweet Virginia, your mountains are where I've wrong. You're feeling nervous, aren't you, boy? With your quiet voice and impeccable style. Don't ever let them steal your joy and your gentle ways to keep them from running wild. They can kick dirt in your face, dress you down and tell you that your place is in the middle and they hate the way you shine. Let them laugh while they can. Let them spin. Let them scatter in the wind. Hi, Jamie. Amy Martin, look at you. <laughs> there you are. Look, Good to meet you. How are you? Good, thank you. Oh my God, I love like where you are right now. What a beautiful, stylish, classy space. Beautiful thank artwork, you. little like vinyl player there, very classy. You know, just, you know, you can tell, you can tell the elegance you have within your art is in oh, your house you. as well. Thank you. I really appreciate that. For sure. Sure, it's for sure. A pretty and Amy, corner. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it, Amy. And you know, you you know, gotta talk about your 2020 EP. We're gonna talk about it. Loved it. Excited for your new stuff. I mean, but that EP, Amy, we 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 heard it last week. It's like a palate cleanser for shitty music, you know. <laughs> Thank you. And, and you know, we have responsibility, Amy. I've always said, my, you know, there's a lot of mediocre stuff out there, and when we get good stuff, like we gotta talk about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I appreciate that. Appreciate yeah. that. And there's so many good songs. I mean, you you have so many good songs. I mean, uh, you know, the Joni Mitchell cover. I mean, you've had, uh, you know, Time Takes Time. I mean, Sweet Mother of Cargo Pants. Just your vocals, just really powerful stuff for sure. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, my, that, that album was um, my, my first album once I parted from the band. So it was really important for me to just kind of put it all out there and kind of dedicate a track to each part of the music that kind of grew me as this vocalist that i am today so totally totally i mean i mean just listening to some stuff i mean which is like kingdom come for example like for my audience like check this out i mean it's just like let's settle in what's going on it's you know operating kind of let's settle in it's just spectacular stuff man you know yeah just i had to get it. the slap in there yeah I caught, yeah that one's a bop uh for sure for sure yeah, so that, that was uh that was exactly that was that track was meant to give a nod to like my gospel, like rock and roll kind of um, part of my roots that I, I grew up listening to. I'm a pretty well-rounded listener in regard to the kind of genres that influenced me. And I felt like for that EP, I, you know, I was going from a seven piece bluegrass band with like right. six dudes to just me. And so I wanted to kind of show, you know, the rest of me as a vocalist. Sure. And so that's what that EP was all about. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, Amy. And of course, you're talking about um, Many Nights Ahead, which was a yeah, great yeah. band, you know, based in Virginia. H how is that transition like, you know, Amy, when you're like, you know, you're the face of a band with old dudes, really, you know, bluegrass band, you guys made some headway. Like, is that like an easy transition to go into like a solo career? Yeah, great question. Um, it was for me, I think the pandemic definitely, um, unfortunately, and fortunately kind of helped um, kind of separate and kind of give some time um, from the band and what we were doing, you know, and I will say too, is I started with those guys back in 2012. We were kids when we, we started playing together, uh, like 18, 19 years old. Sure. And uh, we kind of ran that. So the wheels fell off and, and really folks started getting married and getting jobs and having kids. And so that was kind of, we were still playing, but uh, it definitely was more of a, um, a, a good hometown band that we just would sure. put together for big shows and, and have a lot of fun. And so um, for me, there was definitely this hunger to explore um, the rest of me as a musician. Uh, I didn't grow up listening to bluegrass music or anything like that. I just kind of happened to, we kind of all came together and chose to pick up bluegrass instruments and really make this band. But um, 
we didn't come from bluegrass. So it was a really interesting opportunity for me to uh, step away from the band and then just really, really explore me as a singer songwriter and, yeah, you know, yeah. and maybe take that into Americana so I can, you know, have some Led Zeppelin tracks on my album as well. <laughs> totally, totally. I mean, I remember asking this question actually to Gwen Stefani like a million years ago in Miami radio, but I'll ask it to you now. Like, <laughs> how, how, you know, how much in advance, I guess, do, like as a front woman, do you know, you know, like deep inside of you, honestly, like, oh man, like, I think I want to do my own thing, even when you're still with an older project. Like, is, is that like a sudden thing or is it like a slow brew? Oh, for me, it was a, it was a slow brew. Like I will say first and foremost that um, those guys, many nights ahead, they're my family. Like they, um, my harmonica player was all over a track on my EP. Um, I'll probably pull them in in some facet um, as, mu as studio musicians. Um, they're definitely a part of my story and my DNA. So I love those guys. And I feel like we'll always kind of get back together um, and kind of have each other's backs in the music world in some way we're family, but I'll say from a music standpoint, it was um, definitely a slow brewing where I just kind of felt um, as a vocalist, you know, unfulfilled um, and a songwriter I was starting to get a little more unfulfilled, meaning I was having a ton of fun, but there was a part of my soul that wasn't really getting yeah. tapped, tapped into within sure. um, that, that big band jam band experience. And I really was looking for connection, community, um, starting conversations, having, talking about the hard stuff, like that's who I am as a person. And so um, I really was longing for a way where I could move my music to have an opportunity to, to start conversation and to be in relationship and community with others. And that's really what I'm all about, you know, so yeah. I think moving solo gave me the opportunity to really say, like, discover who am I as an artist and a singer songwriter and a writer of music. Um, but also, what is it that I care about? And how am I going to use this to talk yeah. about? It? And I love who you're becoming, Amy, like, you know, checking out your discography up to now, like, you can really almost like sonically tell how you're evolving into like, a, like a socially, like really deep songwriter. It's a beautiful thing. Um, you know, and of course, you know, you've, you've talked about Brandy Carlisle and, you know, our good, our good friend, Katie Pruitt. I don't know if you've heard of her, but it's like the same DNA. Yeah. And um, I guess, yeah, like, talk to us a little bit about like this. You briefly touched on it, like the Americana female, you know, happens to be queer, but it doesn't necessarily have to be because of that. But just like, like a welcoming theme that you're like, you know, like seeking here with your music. It's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I grew up in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Uh, it's a uh, capital of the Confederacy is, is the area historically. Um, Charlottesville is nearby where um, is pretty well known nationally for the things that go down there. And so growing up um, in a conservative area as a, a queer Christian, in fact, um, it gave me a really unique experience because um, I am in the public eye and I am on stage and I am doing these things. And I found myself time and time again to be the exception. Um, and I journey with yeah. a lot of folks, um, not necessarily queer, but but folks that um, in one way or another felt oppressed and or um, have been harmed by the area or the politics of the area or the church even. And so I've spent a lot of my time um, working with nonprofits and journeying with folks um, in particular, you know, within, um, the cons just be living in a conservative area and what that means, you know, and, and, and how we can navigate that. And so it really shaped me and, and my story growing up in an area where I was the exception and I um, suppressed who I was, you know, a lot of the times I remember being early in the band and writing songs and swapping the pronouns to he, you know, because I, that's just kind of what you did. And um, also gr growing up um, having more of a, you know, I'm, I was often related to like Janis Joplin and all these kind of more Stevie Nicks, you know, these alto um, voices. Um, traditionally growing up, we had mainstream country and um, it was kind of told to me throughout my life that, you know, I didn't have a voice for radio. Um, and, it, you know, because of just, sure. you know, it, it wasn't mainstream. And so I think all of that, you know, kind of the journey and journeying with the countless voices, I mean, once I finally got out of Virginia to really pursue music and to try to live somewhere where I could be more authentically me. And um, if I couldn't leave those voices behind. And so that reflects in my songwriting hundred percent, not only the journey as a queer person, but as a Christian and, and journeying with others. Um, you know, I left Virginia 
uh, after what I felt like was years and years of like trying to, you know, fight the good fight and, and yeah. really, um, I, so it was important for me not to leave those voices behind um, sure. because I wake up in Denver and I'm like, you know, really that the, the, we're not having those same kinds of conversations in the same way, you know, whereas like back in Virginia, I'm showing up at school board meetings, just trying to defend trans kids, you know? And so right. it's, um, it's a good reminder for me to, to keep in contact with my hometown because, um, me moving away doesn't mean it's over. It just means that, um, I get to expand my platform and a bigger megaphone. Yeah. And use it. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, Amy. I think that was a great move. And, you know, you, obviously you mentioned your Colorado move, which is pivotal in your story. You know, it's, it's in your song, uh, Sweet Virginia, which is a beautiful song and, you know, talks a little bit about uh, your emotional connection to, to, uh, to Virginia, but, uh, you called Virginia home for 21 years, uh, mm -hmm. Amy, you know, uh, what was the breakthrough moment? You know, like, what, was there like an aha moment where you were like, it's happening? Was it a pandemic? Was there a moment? Yeah. So, um, I moved about an hour away from Harrisonburg in the quarantine for, um, another day job and yeah. put me out in the middle of nowhere, no internet, no nothing, um, on, in a farmhouse. And, you know, this actually goes directly into really what was the catalyst to say, you know, I'm ready to put out another album is, um, it was January 6th. Uh, and I lived about an hour and a half from DC and it was the storming of the Capitol. And, um, I just kind of had this moment where, I saw these are these are folks that are supporting me and like cheering me on my shows, but are also um, doing direct harm and are down there and, and, and in DC. And, and so it was just this like these people that love me and support me are also such a, a, a huge uh, it's, it's so much pain wow. and so much anger. And so really, I wrote um, a song that's going to be on my upcoming album with Chance McCoy producing. Uh, it's called Annabellum Town. And um, it really is about just that. It was my decision to say, um, I'm leaving. I am going to give my money and my time and my talents and my taxes somewhere else. Um, and so like there really, there are quite a few um, megaphone moments on the album, I would say, um, that really just kind of call out that, that transition of like, okay, I'm ready to break out of this and see what else is out there because it is killing me. And I think that that's what that line in Sweet Virginia uh, talks about, you know, I'm going West where the tears don't fall as far. I think there was this desperation um, to see what else is out there as a uh, queer person and as a musician. Um, so Sweet Virginia is recognizing, that song is recognizing everything happened there and has made me who I am. And I'm incredibly grateful for that and that community. Um, at the same time, I realized that uh, you know, I've played every venue, I've hiked every mountain and, and I've right. cried a lot of tears. And so it's time for me to, to move on. And so Absolutely. Annabellum Town, writing Annabellum Town, which is on my upcoming album, is a catalyst of that move to say, all right, now I got a fire under my belly. I'm moving, but I'm moving with purpose and um, I'll be back kind of, you know, in a, in a different kind of way. And sure enough, as soon as I moved out here, I think it was August or September. Uh, September, October of last year, I got an email after sending it, uh, Sweet Virginia to Chance McCoy, and he agreed to make my next album with me. So, and it's in the Shenandoah Valley. So he, we're, we're recording in West Virginia. So it's kind of a big circle. I left Virginia to come back to record. So. Beautiful. The project, yeah. the, the project, probably gold daughter comes from, but, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's but, right. Very uh, soon. You know, very soon. Yeah. Very close. Yeah. And, and, I, and I do want to talk about the new album. And by the way, Chance McCoy is the producer for my audience. He did your last one. He did a great job. But let me ask you really quickly about Colorado, right? Are you in Denver or in Boulder? Uh, I am in Denver. Yeah. You're in Denver. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we're going to be going to Boulder in April. We're going to cover up Bluebird Music Festival, but we've heard oh, great yeah. things. Great things about Colorado from many artists that we love and respect. What is it about Colorado, Amy? Uh, because a lot of people, like, seriously, are in love with the artistic scene in Colorado. What is going on there? Yeah, I mean, well, I guess I'm probably not the best to ask because I am a new girl and I came during <laughs> uh, before things are are up and up and at them again post pandemic. But for me, what what drew me to Colorado was, um, I mean, it's beautiful, right? So um, the mountains, the Front Range, um, obviously the people. Uh, I'm in marketing during my day job, and so um, it also is a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of jobs here. There's a lot of cult like um, arts. And, and culture scene in regard to downtown, just really trying to um, elevate the arts, elevate local. And I felt like it was a large enough 
city for opportunity, but a small enough close knit for community. And uh, that's really important to me is really finding community where I'm wherever I'm at. And man, Denver has been a warm, warm welcome. Um, I mean, I raised twelve thousand dollars. It's my album is 100 percent community funded. And I raised twelve thousand dollars between um, my the community back home in Virginia. And also a large portion of it came from folks in Denver just hearing my music for the first time and to have that momentum. Um, I've never been the new girl. So it was it was kind of interesting to come from uh, the East Coast where I was comfortable to, uh, you know, West where nobody knew who the heck I was and starting over completely. And so um, for the momentum to gain within the last six to eight months, the way that it has, and for folks that have never heard me before, be just as excited, if not more excited than the folks that have supported me. My entire, um, you know, upbringing is incredible. And it's been, it's been insane. It's been I great. mean, and look at you now, like I can just tell, I mean, my audio audience won't know it, but like the video one will, but you just have like this fire in your eyes. You have like this physical language. It is <laughs> super inspiring. Like we can see it, we can feel it. And you know, you're playing full circle shows like the Mercury Cafe Brew House. We're mm -hmm. like, you know, Alanis Morissette played there in 95 and you're yeah. kind of like rocking and rolling. So yeah, I mean, we, we, we love where you are, Amy, for sure. Thank you. And let me ask you this. Um, you are about a week away from going to West Virginia to record from the time we're recording this podcast. Mm -hmm. What is like, I'm not an artist, but this part, this details fascinate me. Like when you're getting ready to like go and like record with Chance McCoy and like, it's a big project, it's a big part of your career. Like, how are you preparing? Like, do you have like the stack of songs? Like, are you like taking care of your voice? Like, you're not like drinking too much. Like, what is like the process like right now for you? Yeah, that's been, um, that's been really cool to navigate for me. I am not a traditional songwriter in that I sit down and I'm like, I'm going to write a song. It's a lot more improv. So much of everything I do is either something comes to me on the guitar or voice and I just start recording and let it go. And then I listen to it back and write it down. And honestly, that's pretty much the song. So like a lot of a lot of what I do is really authentic and um, it's important to keep that authenticity to me. And so for me, I don't know what a lot of artists do, but I have my list of songs. Um, there are a few more than what will be on the album, which is always difficult. So we'll have to do some song selection, I think, once I get there. Um, but really what I'm doing is I'm not spending too much time with those songs um, because for me, it's so important that, um, particularly the songs that mean so, so much that um, they're still raw. I want, I want that authenticity. I want that emotion. I want that. And so um, I know it's almost like a lot of mental planning, you know, it's like, it's almost like I'm just, I'm seeing it through um, in my head in preparation. I'm going to get boots on the ground. I'm going to sit there with Chance. I went with Chance because he said, we're going to keep making this album until it's something we're both proud of. And that's all you can ask for in a producing partner. And so I'm just really excited to get boots on the ground, get in there, show Chance my songs. And I understand that he works kind of similar in uh, the way that I do in that it's, we push record and uh, we, we jam it out. And um, so I think that this album is going to be something, the special moments haven't even happened yet, you know, and I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. And so I'm just kind of trying to keep it, be my best self. So I'm taking care of me. I'm still masking when I'm in public, just so I don't catch a cold or anything like that. Um, and yeah, just really ready to, uh, that, that fire that you see, that momentum, I'm just ready to unleash it at this point. You know, it's been yeah. a few months. And so um, I'm You're really excited. Yeah, oh yeah, and, and I've shared some, the scratch tracks with a, a few close uh, folks in my circle. Um, I've also teased some of them live just to kind of see how, how it's landing and, um, the response has been phenomenal. And so I, I'm just really, really excited to get this album to your all's ears, really. Outstanding, Amy. I think you're going to play a song for us, which we're really excited about. But but let me, before we get to that, ask you about Chance McCoy. And, you know, it's the second time you work with him. Like we, like oh, we, uh, like, the first. yeah, this is the first time. I'm oh, the first time. Okay. Yeah. So I thought the, the first EP. Okay. No, the yeah, first EP was done by me and a friend of mine, actually, who was a DJ back in Harrisonburg. His name is Ryan uh, Slocum. And gotcha. we did it for ourselves. Yeah. Gotcha. So when you're picking a producer, Amy, you know, I mean, here in Nashville, like people co write and co produce like with everybody all the time. But I'm always curious, like, like, how do you commit to someone? Like, when do you know? Because it's an, it's like an important relationship. Like, what is, what is, like, how do you know when it's like, okay, Chance, you and I, like, we can do something more than just like casual here, artistic. Yeah, absolutely. So um, 
I think that's a large part of my journey this year is just really learning to knock. Um, and because I realized that, um, you know, I, I would never was sending, I wasn't sending those emails. I wasn't asking if I didn't feel like, you know what I mean? I was ready or, or whatever, you know, or I hadn't bought my time. And I kind of just had this realization that, you know, everyone else is knocking, everyone else is calling, everyone else is emailing. Um, why not me? And so um, that really started that momentum as soon as I got to Colorado is that like, Hey, this is it. I'm the new gal. I'm starting over. So I'm just going to knock, knock, knock. And, um, Massive make it if if I'm not feeling confident or whatever that is. But, you know, once you start doing that and ripping the Band-Aid, um, it just flows and those doors open. And so for me with Chance, it actually happened because um, a place out of Nashville reached out to me offering to um, help make and produce my album and were willing to cover part of the cost. And so then that just led to me reaching out to other places in Nashville that um, were going that were producing and recording records. And once I started getting yeses for a few of them, I thought, well, why don't I just ask who I want to, if they're saying yes. <laughs> and so I really just, um, I just really was Googling producers and, and I have a loose connection with Chance McCoy. He doesn't know this, but my band, um, so the banjo player, my band, their family owns um, Turner Ham in Fox Run, Virginia. They have phenomenal ham. Well, Oak Crow Medicine Show, loves their ham so they so we were sending them ham and our many nights ahead eps growing what? up and all of that so so chance mccoy is a familiar name um you know and he's from he's familiar with the the virginia area and the harrisonburg area and so it felt a lot like home you know and so i reached out to him um via email and sent sweet virginia and was just like hey i'm looking for a producer um, a partner that's really going to be a part of this. I was looking for more than just somebody that was going to help me turn a record. And um, in Chance's response, uh, he he made it very clear that um, we were going to keep working on this, this album. It wasn't about the amount of hours that I had in the studio or whatever, but that we were going to make this album as a partnership. And it was not going to be finished until it was something that we were both proud of. And so to have his commitment on that, on that kind of level, it was a no brainer. It was something, it was the partnership that I was looking for in creating this album, because it is important for me for this album to speak for itself and sure. to have a producer that can um, make it come alive, but also keep true to like my artistry and, and the stories that I'm trying to tell. And I just felt like it was a no brainer um, that Chance was the right partner for this. Epic. Amy Martin. Wow. We cannot wait. We cannot wait. Um, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Take us away with a song. But yeah, I mean, we could talk to you for like 100 hours. So yeah, for sure. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jamie. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely, Amy. So what are you going to play for us? Uh, well, what are what am I going to play? What are I you thought... feeling? What are you what are you in, with your vibe? Like with your in, what are you feeling? That's what you know. OK, great. All right. Well, uh, here is Sweet Virginia. Darling, so long, sweetheart. I'm heading out early for a fresh start. I'm going west where the tears don't fall as far. I'll hold you close, and inside my heart, I promise I won't forget you. You work of art, it's time for me to get going. You tear. Sweet Virginia, your mountains are where I belong. But your river's running dry and your roads they aren't leading home. I'll tell my daughters about your sky and how your winter's glistening and the cardinals fly. And Lord, how I've grown as the years they have gone. I owe you my guitar How these roads have shaped me And wrecked my cars But I've climbed every mountain And I've counted every star Sweet Virginia Your mountains are where I belong But your river's running dry And your roads they on Your river's running dry 
We are so on your bandwagon. This is ridiculous. All right, on. Oh, thank you so much. We're, like, we're buying all the stock, all the all, all the, <laughs> the whole thing. Super, super excited for everything. It's gonna be a big year for you, and we cannot wait to see what you come up with, Amy. Thank you so awesome. much for your time. Let me know when you're in Boulder. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Take care. Right. See you, Jamie.